and think tech community matters in this beautiful house. Oh, you'll see more of this house. I'm not sure whose house it is, but it's really nice. <laughs> We're talking about tax today with Tom Yamachika. Who else would you want to talk about tax with? He's the CEO of the uh, Hawaii Tax Foundation, and it's an appropriate discussion these days, given all the mm, issues that are bouncing around in Washington and how they would affect us here. Thank you for coming on the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, it's great. It's not my house. No, no, okay, well, I don't know anybody who might have a house like this, but <laughs> I'm sure somebody does. It must be one of those top 1% wealthy guys, you know? They're, we can talk about them. They're part of the landscape these days. They are. So tell us about the Tax Foundation these days. What is it? Uh, what do you do? Who supports you? How do you function? Well, we're, a tax, we're a taxpayer watchdog organization. We uh, basically keep an eye on what's happening at the legislature primarily, and we uh, do keep tabs on some of the other things that are happening at the county levels. Uh, but mm -hmm. our, most of our work is at the legislature, and we follow what's, what's going through. Uh, we, we make comments when appropriate and uh, try to you know, make sure that lawmakers are making good decisions. So you're there. I mean, if I know that a tax bill is going to be heard in a given committee in the state legislature, or for that matter, in the county, um, you'll be there. Uh, a lot of times we are, yes. Yeah. So weigh in on it and all yes, that. Yes. Is your general drift to prevent taxes from going higher? Um, do, you, do you ever want them to go higher? Um, is your general drift to, to focus on one kind of tax versus another kind? Of, what, are your, what are your hot points, so to speak? Well, uh, one of the problems that we have here is that uh, taxes do remain a, a very serious burden to uh, individuals, families, businesses. Um, the, you know, the state collects a lot per capita, uh, and we're trying to make sure that, at least on the revenue side, that, that they're doing it responsibly. Um, responsibly means with due regard for the impact of the tax on our citizens and our community, I take it. Right, right. And then uh, in our system, we're supposed to have taxpayer rights and protections so that um, you know, the, the enormous powers that are wielded by the Department of Taxation don't get used irresponsibly. God, I remember a quote back when it said, the power to tax is the power to destroy. Yeah, that's from a U.S. Supreme Court case. Yeah, that's Tom is a lawyer and an accountant, both. Woo! -hoo. Well, actually, no, I, I'm not an accountant. I'm just a lawyer, but oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. In, in an accounting firm, which is which is probably why you oh, right. have it in person. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> anyway, okay, so you know, right now everybody's fascinated with the tax reform bill. I always do this when I refer to it, the tax reform bill uh, in the in the Trump Congress, and. Um, you know, I, I don't know all the provisions. I doubt he knows all the provisions, but so a couple of them come to mind, and I wanted to see what kind of effect that would have on our, our people here. One is, uh, I think that there's an agreement between the House and the Senate now that they want to they douse the uh, uh, medical uh, deductions provision in the uh, Internal Revenue Code. Um, this is very hard on anyone who's having a um, you know medical emergency, a medical problem in the family where he or she is spending tons of money, and sometimes you know we do, we have to. It's not voluntary, and we don't. We under this new approach in the, in this new tax reform bill, uh, we wouldn't get a deduction, even though it was you know using as usurping all of our disposable income in the process. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 um. Every so often, uh, the, the folks in Washington think about uh, replacing the system that we have, which, which has a lot of deductions, with another system that has you know, far fewer deductions. That happened in 1986, as you recall. Uh, the, the idea was you, know, you used to have like, deductions for uh, consumer interest. You have, you have deductions for you know, this and that. A lot of these were taken away. Um, to, to get a you know a broader base and a, and a lower rate. And in a sense, what they're trying to do this time is do the same thing. Namely, they're, they're trying to take away a lot of the deductions, uh, but make up for it by you know, a little bit lower rate for, uh, you know, and, and for most of the population that would uh, achieve savings as a result. I'll bet if you, if you did a sort of macro analysis with a big computer on that, you would find at the end of the day, 
you reduce the rates such as they are ostensibly reform, and you take away the deduction, um, it, do it hurts the middle class taxpayer more than it helps. Am I right? Well, the uh, National Tax Foundation, and we're not uh, associated with them more than casually, but they just happen to have the same name. They're in Washington. They've done scenarios um, based on you know upper, middle, and lower income taxpayers, and and their conclusion that it is is that uh, almost everybody benefits. Benefits. Yeah. By having the no but deduction, on but the lower rate. Yeah. But a lower rate. But 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 we we've heard so often. I mean, we're we're hearing every day um, that the that a lot of journalists anyway are saying. Um, that this will favor the wealthy, the one percent, and it will hurt uh, the middle class. We can't. We don't really want to hurt the middle class. It's bad for the country, and I'm not sure if if it's revenue neutral or what for the lower classes, for the disadvantaged, the, the poor people. Um, what, what's your take on that? Well, the uh, the models that the Tax Foundation did uh, kind of show broad-based um, tax relief. Uh, which is kind of surprising because because there's like give it, giving and taking going on. Uh, but uh, one thing that you do have to remember is that um, you know when you when you give tax relief, you have to kind of start from the proposition that 95 percent of the taxes are paid by the top 20 percent of the people mm -hmm. in, in terms of you know what they make. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to give tax relief at all, yeah, there's going to be Tax relief when you're the wealthy. So the National Tax Foundation is saying that the, this tax reform bill, which a lot of people feel is deadly, um, is actually not so bad. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's very easy to look at a particular provision in isolation and and say, okay, well, yeah, you're removing this deduction, that must be bad, right? Because if that's all you're doing, yeah, then you got to pay more tax. Yeah. But. But, but there are so many uh, levers and, and dials being turned and, and levers being pulled. Uh, there, there are a lot of things going on. Um, there are, for example, uh, you're going to eliminate the alternative minimum tax. Now, one of the things that uh, has been talked about, you know, as well as like uh, eliminating the, the medical deduction, is eliminating the deduction for state and local tax. Okay, uh, right now, you know, most of us like you and I, who pay taxes to a high tax state like ours, can get a benefit on our federal tax return for state and local tax, you know, by item itemizing deductions. Uh, under the... Uh, tax reform. You know, yeah, the quote-unquote tax reform proposals, uh, that'll go away. Uh, but. But the interesting thing is, a lot of people now can't get the benefit of, of state and local tax deductions anyway, because state and local tax deductions are what's called a preference item for alternative minimum tax. So you, you have too much state and local tax deductions, you, you get thrown into alternative minimum tax, and, it's, and, then, it, and then it doesn't help you. Mm. That, but that alternative minimum tax is for people at the bottom end of the curve, right? How about for the middle class? For the middle class, uh, yeah, you would you would get a benefit from it, typically. Yeah, from that re deduction. Yes. So if that deduction goes away, all of a sudden you got stuck. If I if I paid I don't know what say ten thousand dollars for state and local tax, maybe more actually, um, I don't get to deduct that at all. Therefore, I have just lost say fifty percent of that in, in the deduction I could have had against uh, against income and in my federal income. Yeah. yeah, but then what you have to figure out is. What is the offsetting impact of the lower rate you're going to be paying? Right. Well, how how dramatic? I mean, this all suggests this National Tax Foundation analysis you're talking about all suggests that there's going to be serious reduction in the rates, so serious uh, that the repeal of these um, you know tax deductions like like um, interest and um, um, the uh, what do you call it uh, medical deduction. Yeah, uh, I mean, for, every, for every interest. state tax deduction, the three of them uh, are, are are actually going to be um, uh, balanced or improved on by the reduction in the rates, and so I wind up with 
a good deal, even though I'm losing my customary deductions. Uh, so right now, now they're, they're going to. I mean, the the current plan is for them to keep the mortgage interest deduction in some form, uh, you know, with some limits, uh, and to keep the child care credit. Uh, I think the other couple of things are keeping the charitable charitable contribution deduction. Why? Why those? I mean, I, I have I have an answer I'd like to throw at you. It's because politically, that's yeah, it's, it's that's, that's dangerous water for the Republicans to do that. People will, you know, march it's, against them. Yeah, it's politics. Uh, yeah, politics. Whole thing is politics. Well, why? I mean, if we can discuss this, why are the Republicans so interested in this quote tax reform? They they don't they don't seem to be they don't care about raising more money for infrastructure or for military expenses. Um, they want to reduce those. They want to pull the wings out of the bureaucracy. Um, yeah, well, they, they want to spend less in federal government um, that's at right. the same and time. Ide ideologically, their, their platform has been that we have too much government, that it's getting in the way of things like the free market, and that we should be you know, shrinking that back uh, and if it's shrunk, if it's shrunk back enough, we won't need the money that we now take in to support it. Yeah, but but you know, billions for a, a wall. I don't know if he's ever going to be able to do that. Um, billions for infrastructure. I don't know if he's ever going to be able to do that. Billions for the for the military. He's beefing up the military. He wants to have more nuclear weapons. Um, how is he going to get the money for that? No, it's a very good question. You know. Yeah. All, all kinds of negotiations are happening in Washington right now. Uh, it's all politics. Yeah, I talked to uh, uh, Roger uh, Epstein a couple of weeks ago. He was in Washington. We had him on Skype. And he said, big concern about this um, tax reform bill is that it, it throws, uh, what, one and a half trillion dollars into the economy because the taxes will be ostensibly lower. Um, and that's not a good thing on a, on a macroeconomic basis. You can't just throw that much money into the economy. You wind up with inflation, major inflation. And um, nobody's ever done that before, and so it's unpredictable exactly what will happen, except that it's clear, he believes, and others, that there will be inflation, and inflation will damage everybody. Um, thoughts about that? I mean, on a macroeconomic level, what effect will this reform bill have? Well, I mean, that's obviously one way to think about it. The other, the other uh, way to think about it is you kind of look at what happened um, in 1986, and uh, you know, were there some favorable econ economic uh, results from the, the reforms that took place at that time? I mean, I, I think some people say the answer is yes, and so you can look forward to the same this time around. What? What what would be, what would be the result? Uh, according to them, you would stimulate the economy. Um, the trickle down theory. Yeah, the trickle down. If the one percent, if the rich have more money, they'll spend it. And didn't uh, didn't President Hoover try that just before 1929? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the trickle down <laughs> thing was. It was a little bit before my. We've had history on the trickle down thing. Right. But it's not, I mean, people, everybody agrees that the trickle-down thing is going to actually stimulate the economy or, or do damage to the economy, or that, or that the, um, the phenomenon is really valid, that if the rich have more money, you know, the, you know and, under, and under this bill, you know, you, I, I guess it's still the way it was announced recently, it is, it's a repeal of the estate tax. Um, so that means the rich not only don't pay as much taxes relative to the rest of us, but the rich keep the money. Uh, they, they don't have any tax from generation to generation, and they can become royalty over time, over years and decades and generations. Uh, well, where does that fit in, in the customary tax policy? I mean, it seems to violate the basic reason for the estate tax, which goes way back to, what, uh, 1916 or something. Um, that, that we don't want wealth to accumulate uh, among the, the wealthy, you know, the robber barons in those days. Mm -hmm. We, we want to cut that off generation by generation so nobody gets too wealthy and accumulated wealth. Um, where does that fit as a matter of policy? Well, I mean, that, 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 it, it is a policy question. Um, so on the one hand, you have, you have socialism, which is, which is kind of, yeah, let's, let's not 
let anybody get uh, uh, too wealthy. And then on the other hand, you have capitalism, which is, well, if you earned it, you get to keep it. Mm -hmm. uh, so where is the proper balance between the two? You know, I don't know. Well, Republicans, especially the extreme Republicans, or right-wing extremists, say they have a different view of that than Democrats, for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that's really what we're talking about. Let's take one minute break. Tom is Tom Yamachika. He's uh, an attorney, and he's the CEO of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We're talking about taxes in, in 2018. And when we come back, we'll talk about the effect of these changes in Washington and how they will play out here in Honolulu, in Hawaii. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Carol Mon Lee, Think Tech Hawaii's Volunteer Chief Operating Officer and occasional host, and this is Minky. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online, web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thanksforthinktech.cosvox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo, and shishe for your generosity. Okay, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters. We're here with Tom Yamachika. He's the CEO of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. We're talking about taxes in 2018. And you know, we've identified in the first part of the show that there are three things that will that that are gonna that are if the bill passes, we all have our views about whether it should pass as a matter of principle, but if the bill passes, um, the real estate interest deduction will be affected. Uh, the medical medical deduction will be affected or repealed completely. And what was the third one? Oh, the, the state, state tax, tax state, yeah. state and local tax uh, deduction will be uh, repealed. So <clears throat> this you know this is going to change it, and uh, hopefully you know it's not a bait and switch kind of thing where they say yes we're repealing all these deductions, but don't worry because you have lower rates. You know the thing about. Um, tax is that the rates tend to go up over time. <laughs> so they can take away the deduction, give you a reduction in, in the tax rate, but then next year hmm, we could give an increase in the tax rate, and then we just yeah, get that, that's, that's kind of a, a more, more of a, a state level phenomenon. Um, uh, the, uh, at, at the federal level, I think 39.6 has been around for at least 20 years. It hasn't, hasn't gone above that. Yeah, I mean, it was, that's the individual top uh, right, right. They, income they tax rate. rate. Yeah, um, what's the reduction in that rate now coming? Uh, it's just it's going to be the same, uh, but it, it kicks in at a much higher level. So okay. it would kick in at I think a million dollars or or, or uh, something like so that. So you're more subtle. You don't have to change the rate. All you have to do is change the level. That's right. <laughs> A lot of people wouldn't even see that coming. They wouldn't know the difference. This is tricky. Well, and that's, you know, talking about this bill, um, you know, health care has an emotional charge on it. People were, you know, parading around about it. They were ganging up on legislators in various states on the mainland, you know, not to vote for health care, this health care reform. reform. Um, <laughs> but now we have the tax bill. It's much more sophisticated, and it's numbers. And in order to see it, you have to be thinking of, uh, you have to be interested in the whole country, the whole demograph. And most people don't do that. They don't see the implications for the other guy. They might see it for themselves, and of course they may not either. They may say, I don't care. <laughs> it'll be yeah. what it'll be. Um, but uh, you know, that's, that's the problem. So you don't have anybody camping out in front of, the, in front of a congressman's door in, on the mainland over this, because they don't, they don't see it as particularly involving them, and they don't see it as a point of national policy or national tax policy. You know? Yeah, um, tax in general is a very complicated subject, and uh, you know, attesting to that is that most people 
uh, hire somebody to prepare the taxes. Sure. For. Um, I mean, I, 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 I kind of prepare my own because you know I'm, I'm in the business, right? So I should be able to do that. Uh, but most of the people do go to some professional, and, and, and the reason for that is because the computations become very, very complicated. Right. So if you have trouble with the computation and you want to get involved in that, then why in the world would you become involved? Would you study up and you know take a position on national tax policy? People just don't do that. Yeah, and and, and like I said, it's it's like uh, you know pushing on a balloon, right? Because you you push on one side, you know, another side pops out, and, and you and you really have to keep track of 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 all the. Uh, branches or facets to, to see if the balloon is actually getting smaller. But one thing is, it's profound. Yes. It affects the economy. It affects our lives. For somebody, for example, that has a sick spouse who needs help in a care facility and is spending $10,000 a month on that, now all of a sudden, no deduction. It's, it's real personal. And, uh, you know, I, it's really too bad that it works that way. So, you know, you tell me that the National Tax Foundation has made a report, but, you know, I remember that there had been, as there were in the health care issue a couple of months ago, there's been no hearings, no hearing, not a single, nary a one on this tax reform bill, opposed to ordinary congressional procedure of hiring hearings and getting evidence and talking to people in the community and experts and this and that and the other thing. In this case, nary a one. Can we achieve good tax policy without having hearings on a bill which so profoundly affects everyone in the country? It's, it's, it's very tough, I think. Um, uh, th there are obviously people up there who think they know what's going on. Mm. Um, th uh, tax bills have been testified to many times before. You know, some have the provisions under, under consideration now, some of them don't. But, uh, they think they know what they're doing. Yeah. Is there any other organization aside from the National Tax Foundation that has weighed in and made a report for Congress, made their analysis, like, you know, what the government budget office and all that uh, was doing on health care? Yeah, I, b I believe CBO has, uh, Congressional Budget Office has made one. Uh, there are other organizations, like nonprofits like myself, um, that, have, that have popped up and done various aspects of it. Mm -hmm. uh, have you... Have you weighed in with Congress? Oh no. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, no. We we would be kind of more con more interested in state. What what happens uh, if there's something that passes in Washington? We're, we're trying to figure out whether and to what extent it's going to apply to the state. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I remember in the last session we interviewed a couple of legislators and they said, well, um, you know, Trump will pull the wings out of a lot of federal programs that are funding Hawaii projects and activities, and we will have to make up the difference here if we want to see those projects go forward. And they were talking about building an initiative that would raise money and fill the gap that was left when Trump started cutting these projects. I don't know the status of that, uh, but, but that's, uh, and that question still exists, I suppose, in terms of funding projects where the federal government decided to, you know, can it. Um, but the question to me for 2018 is more sophisticated, I think. It's what do we do when he cuts these three or more type deductions on federal income tax reporting? Um, real estate interest, medical deduction, state and local taxes. Those are going to change the way people report their taxes. And um, as we discussed before, um, state tax, the state income tax law follows the federal. So what happens when the federal changes in such a dramatic way? Well then, what, what happens is uh, the, the state every year uh, drafts a bill to pick up the federal changes up to the end of the previous state calendar. tax office. Yeah, up, up to the end of the previous calendar. So it's, it's a major kind of thing. Whatever happened in Washington, the state tax office wants to conform the state tax code to yeah, the there's, changes there's, there's to the federal something tax. something in our in income tax law that, that requires the state tax office to prepare such a bill. And so it's required? That, yeah, it's required. Okay, okay. And they do every yeah, year. They do. And I, I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, I think a wild guess is that every year that bill passes. Yes, it does. <laughs> but, but, the, but the question, you know, the, the $64 million question is what's in it, right? Uh, 
because they don't necessarily pick up everything that the feds do. Um, some notable exceptions are like when the, uh, when the feds passed uh, and exp expanded what we call Section 179, which is expensing for businesses. But we didn't pick that up. We thought it would cost too much money. Mm. So we didn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. And the deduction would have left more money in the hands of the taxpayers, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we were getting the revenue we were getting before. Right. So like when the, Fed, the, the, when the feds raised the, the Section 179 limit to, I think, you know, $500,000, we left ours at $25,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, so there is a certain amount of discretion happening here. Yes. And that takes me to the whole thing about, about say, these three uh, reductions, how they're going to change on the federal side if this bill passes. Um, what, what happens to us? Because this will, if it's a mirror image, if, if we just adopt it wholesale, then the way we fill out our state, the way we pay our state taxes will will follow what the Fed is doing. And um, right. I guess that could mean um, the state is getting more money because yeah. of the... See, so so, so what, what happens is one of the things that's not picked up automatically is, mm -hmm. the, is the tax rate. Okay, we have to do that ourselves. Okay. Okay, so uh, if we just pick up the federal changes and don't do anything with the tax rate, you know, the state will take lots more money. Yeah. Okay. In 1986, when, when a tax reform happened, uh, we in Hawaii did lower the, 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 the top rates yeah. uh, to mirror what was going on, on federally. Yeah. Whether that's going to happen this time around, assuming the bill passes and is signed into law, I, I don't know what they'll do. But what, what it sounds like, though, let me throw a, a possibility at you. So the state, the, by virtue of the regular procedure, the tax office goes to the legislature's would you please conform um, the state tax code to the, the federal changes about these, say, these three deductions I mentioned? Right. Um, and we'll leave the rates alone uh, for now. Um, so that, that results in more revenue for the state. And I, you can make the argument the state needs more revenue. The state has all kinds of um, deficits and unfunded liabilities of tens of billions. Some people estimated it's close to 50 billion that we are going to have to pay, but we don't have any prospect of raising that much money, including rail, including the homeless, including the employees' retirement system deficit and all that. Um, so, so you could make an argument that let's just leave the rate the same, and we'll take the take the advantage that we get out of following along on these federal changes. Oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure there will be lots of people who would want to do that. Okay, what what what, what about the tax foundation? What would your position be? Would you have a position on that? Well, we would, I, I, I believe, uh, we would urge lawmakers to at least adjust the rates to be concomitant with the federal change. Yeah, and that's the issue, isn't it, coming up in 2018? That is a big issue for the state. Well, it, it, it'll, it'll depend on when the feds adopt their program, if they, if they do adopt it. Now, if they adopt it by the end of the year, then we'll be considering the conformity in this coming legislative session in 2018. If they don't, Right, if they if they adopt tax reform uh, in early 2018, then we will be considering it in 2019. Uh, so we we get a year of confusion. <laughs> so we get a year of confusion. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. It's great to talk to you. There's more coming down the pike. This is uh, exciting, maybe the wrong term for it. But it's certainly mind-boggling, anyway. It is mind-boggling, definitely. <laughs> Tom Yamachika, CEO of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jay.